So, have you finished? Have you finished work for the day, Caesar? I have a meeting at six. Okay. All right. So we've. I've been sitting here seven, since seven thirty. Really? <laughs> yes. Non-stop, basically. Man, my life is crazy. You don't want to know. So yeah, where, I'll tell you actually. Where Where are you now? Are you in? Are you at home, or are you in the? Are you in the university? I'm at home. This is my home office. Yeah. Wow. So we are kind of in a mix of on ground, virtual, and I'm pretty much spending mostly of my days here. Okay. So Cesar, uh, we the last time we think we saw each other was possibly the end of 2013. Probably yeah, at the end of 2013, 14, so quite a long time ago. Quite a long time quite ago. Quite a long and time. That, and that was at uh, at Whitley at Jaguar before they moved to Gaydon. Um, yeah. And did you did you miss the move or? I missed the move. I missed the move. I was basically. I stayed with Jagger until August 2018. I think they moved in beginning of 2019, if I'm not if I'm not wrong. Oh yeah, end of 18, probably. So yeah, I missed yeah. the move. I saw the building, but never went there. Well, I think the building was planned was planned for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, quite a long time. I remember yeah. that kind of when when I joined, probably when when you joined Jagger in two thousand twelve as well. That was a red. There was already a conversation about moving to the new this new building and so on and on. Has been with since kind of I've been hearing that since I joined it. Yeah, I remember them talking about it for ages, and it just felt like it was never actually going to happen. Like there was there was some stupid. Uh, there was like a a problem with the the car park or something fucking ridiculous like that for for ages. There was like a real issue with for the ages, size of the ages. car park or the lack of space or or so. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But dude, I mean, I yeah, it's great to fucking see you, huh? Yeah, there was a huge problem about parking. I remember that. Yeah. So, dude, it's it's great to see you again. It's been an absolute age, at least seven years, I think going on maybe eight yeah. um and uh let's yeah let's start with with what you're doing now at the moment and then we can yeah. we can go back and then re-end up here so you are currently in the u.s yes i'm in savannah georgia now uh as i mentioned i left jagger in august 2018 right and Changed completely or kind of took completely, went to the academic side and start working here as chair or director for our industrial design department. I worked for SCAD, the Savannah College of Art and Design, and kind of amazing, amazing change and amazing opportunities. I mean, things that I've seen here kind of are mind blowing, the opportunity and so on and on and on. Then I never quit. Actually, I kind of I have my design consultancy and I've been working on many different projects now as we talk and our, my 6 p.m. meeting, it's about a Chinese product that I'm doing for a Chinese brand. So I have my designers working on it. I have um, I'm running a project for a boat in South America, doing another project in Germany, uh, been working in the kind of aviation side here. So doing a little bit of everything. So never stopped, never stopped. <laughs> Which is good, wow. right? Be, uh, it's, a, it's it's a nice change, but in reality, very little has changed. Just uh, I continue to work as an automotive designer, basically running. Now I have probably six to seven designers working with me, and kind of a multiple crazy little things. And again, the job at the universities, That's... it's so cool. I never imagined that what I'm seeing there and things that I'm going through would be so exciting. So Caesar, what something I didn't realize is, or I was always a bit confused about this, that I knew there was like I wasn't there was this confusion with 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 regards to you being either Brazilian or Italian. And it turns out that you were born in Brazil, but you have this uh strong Italian heritage as well. 
my my whole family is from yeah my whole family is from Lucca in Tuscany, right? And my, kind of my grandfather yeah. moved to Brazil, uh, and a lot of my family moved to Brazil. But let's say that I have a big chunk in Italy, a big chunk in Brazil. When I was back in Italy, I I, I used to live in Lucca, so I kind of I had contact with them normally and. But yeah, I'm half half. I feel half half actually. I cannot say the the term that I describe that is that I'm Braz Italian, right? I kind of a half Brazilian, half Italian. I feel like both, and I enjoy that a lot. So again, but my whole family is from Tuscany in Italy. But you 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 were born born and raised in Brazil. Is that correct? Yeah, but I've done a lot of Brazil, Italy, kind of in that in that time. I've done. I did my. I started studying. In Brazil, uh, end up going back to Italy. I did my graduation, undergraduation or bachelor's degree in Brazil. My master's in Italy. So it's a little bit of come and go, right? So, but yeah. So that, but that the 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 period that you were studying was that like your first time that you had uh, uh, lived in Italy? Well, uh, before I answer that, let me connect my computer. Otherwise, it's going to die. Okay, good idea. Yeah, I've been there before. I've been there before, but living, living properly alone. Li- yeah, living, was living, the first living, time. living. Yeah, okay, living. Wow. I've been there many times, but living was the first. So, Sisa, you. Yeah, you by the way, oh. by the way, we talked oh, about fuck, this, so you, right? Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me. Okay, I was <laughs> gonna get coffee, but if you're gonna do that, then let me. Uh, hold on. You're gonna have to give me a second. One second. No freaking way. It's 2 p.m. here, or actually 3 okay. p.m. And you convinced me to have wine, and I I keep, need to keep okay. working. One. So grab a wine. One second. <laughs> that was easy. You have a bottle of wine just beside you. Okay. That's, so that's I'm gonna handy. ask. I'm gonna ask you a question, and then you yeah. can answer while I attempt to open this bottle. Um. So, dude, did you you studied initially? Did you study architecture or was the institution called, uh, was it an architecture institution? I started working, um, let's let's go back to that. I started working in 1995, more or less, a little bit early, I think. Uh, I used to have a girlfriend and her father uh, was an amazing engineer, right? And... One day he came to me and he said, listen, I have something that is going to change your life. And I said, he's going to kill me now, kill me now right? I'm dating his, her, his daughter and he's going to kill me now. And, and he said, no, 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 nothing like that. He, he gave me a pack of uh, flop disks, literally, not the big ones, the smaller ones. And he said, go to my computer. And again, he used to have one of those kind of mind-blowing computers for the time. And he said... Uh, install this this software there, and that was AutoCAD, right? It was AutoCAD, and and I installed it, and and I finished. And he said, "Let me show you something." He got another disk that took ages to download, and <laughs> when he opened, was the plan, the city plan of the city that I used to live, and boom, that was the first moment that I saw that huge CAD model, and I said. Fucking hell. I need to learn this thing. And I start modeling, right? I start doing 3D models, kind of architecture, architectural 3D models. And I got a job at that time at Santander Bank, 1995, uh, working as a modeler there. And man, that changed my life. I started working and I said, I want to study architecture, right? I want to go to this. And I End up going, always, again, the classic sentence, always dreamed about being a car designer, right? End up that um, I did, I quit in the third year and I went for industrial design. So I, I, I need to do another year to finish basically architecture. One day, maybe one day. But uh, I started doing industrial design and graduated, went to kind of a short time in Boston about a year in Boston, get back, finished, uh, and here we are. Then I did my master's, of course, but here I am. But um, did but, you did you did you intend to become an architect, or 
did you did you want to become a car designer? I, I think my goal has been always to become a car designer. Right? I've been always dreaming yeah. about that, kind of always sketching and kind of as we do. I, I mean, I keep, you know, I keep kind of playing with many kind of different things and doing my side projects, as I mentioned, and doing my stuff. So this is kind of for probably stuff that we do this week. And so I always dreamed about that. Then architecture got a huge place in my heart and I still love it. I still love the way uh, we talk about the kind of urban development and, and how seats are evolving regarding transportation and so on and on. So there's always this, always this kind of vision about what the future would be mainly connected with automotive. But I realized that to do what I would like to as an architect, I would need to have different contacts. I would need to be in a different circle. Uh, otherwise, I would be designing little houses and kind of changing windows uh, for the lady. Oh, I don't like the window there. I like the window there. So, yeah, but that destroys a kind of the airflow of the, of the house. And I don't mind. I want the window there. So, like, no, I don't want it. I mean, the first jobs that I got as kind of working as an architect, not as an architect, as an intern, I said, no, that's not for me. <laughs> I want to do something else and I end up uh, going to industrial design and here I am. But Cesar, did you, did you intend to go and work in Europe, for example, or did you want to stay in, in uh, South America? I mean, I, I mean, there was, there's, as I mentioned, there's, there was, there was always this connection, right? And, and then kind of, oh, should we go back to Italy? Should we stay here? Uh, should we kind of... Oh, by the way, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. There, there, I mean, this conversation has been always there, right? At that moment, because I probably, because I get that job in, in 1995, and my life started to spin in a very nice way, I should say. I kind of, before graduating, I had a job that was kind of pretty cool. And was earning money, so I was happy. Everything was okay. I used to play as well. I still play, and I had a band in that time, and we used to play quite a lot. So uh, perfect life, <laughs> kind of I would say. And but I always had that kind of intent to go back and kind of reconnect. End up that it happened, and I went before to do to New York to work again in a design consultancy that they used to do a little bit of uh, graphic design, a lot of product design, a lot of things related to automotive, kind of consultancy work, kind of designing front wheels to seats, let's say like that, never full car, but stuff like that. And I went back to Italy. And when I was there, I said, listen, if I really want to get deeper in the automotive design industry, I need to get more specialized. I need to kind of learn more. And I ended up going to Politecnico di Milano, where I met Leonello. He was my professor there. Uh, but when I joined, the funny thing, when I joined uh, Politecnico di Milano to do my master's, I was graduated already probably kind of seven years before. And I started working probably 14 years earlier than that moment. So was an eye opener for me, of course, and kind of opened a lot of doors, ended up going to Fiat for a short period of time, then Austria, then did some stuff a little bit in Germany, Hungary, and then Jack. So, but yeah, it was kind of, I never actually, Sam, if I say that I kind of planned, you know, we have a vision, right? We, I keep saying we should have, we should be aware that where we want to be in 10 years time, May never happens as you want. Never happen as, uh, happens as you want. So it's just. Says it. Tell me how. Like how difficult was it making that decision to go back and study after you had already had uh, a taste of independence and um, and and you were already basically working. I mean, how how difficult was that decision? I I don't think it was difficult. I was married already at that time, and my wife said, what in the hell are you doing, right? 
Are you saying that you're going to stop, quit your work in this moment and 2008-ish, let's say like this, just after, and you're going to do a master's degree? You're joking. I said, let's do like that. I said, you do your master's. She's a pharmaceutical researcher. She's much more smarter than me, right? Much smarter than me. She has two universities, a lot of, a lot of stuff. And I said, specializations and a lot of cool things. And I said, uh, let's do like this. You do the master's that you want in pharmaceutical researcher research as you're kind of looking for and i do mine and i remember i got a, a scholarship that i applied but i got a scholarship from maserati and how, how did that another, happen a long story okay. long story like, and that was a contest that happened already inside of the masters but i had a previous um loan let's say like that that allowed me to do that because it's a long story. Okay. But yeah, it was, a, it was cool. But I never felt guilty or never felt it was a difficult decision. I just, it happened naturally. Because again, I believe, that's why I'm, in, I'm in kind of in the academic side today. I, I believe in the power of transforming lives through education. Right? Uh, it's amazing how you, you must have the mindset, the kind of the lifestyle of being a designer. Kind of, you must put that in your mind and understand really what you want to achieve, how the way to think, having this kind of passion to be a constant learner, uh, having your behavior, behavior surrounded by these attitudes that create this kind of database of knowledge, right? And and I always felt like that this is a necessity, right? I'm looking to get a PhD now. So do I need it? I don't know, but I, I like the idea. I love the idea. Would, I, would, it, would it change something? I don't know, but I'm willing for it. So again, like I have the impression that after these two and a half years that I'm here, that some of the students that went through the classes that we've been teaching and kind of, I'm the chair for the department, so I have full control about what we do here. Kind of a lot of control, let's say like this, about kind of what goes in the classroom, the, 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 the academic content and how we want to be. Uh, how we want to kind of tailor and create these visionaries of the future. Uh, so I, I, I always felt like it's it's a life changing opportunity. You see uh, how a, a guy gets in the classroom completely unaware about all the content that he's going to be exposed to, and then after ten weeks, it's a term here, it's a quarter here. This person is transformed. And he, he, he knows what he's talking about, right? And it's a, it's a mindset. Being a designer is about being curious, you, I would say, right? You have this desire to know this, this idea that, I don't know, you eat, if you eat only to say in, at home, right? And you spend 40 years of your life kind of in, in the region that you leave, you have a, you have a, an amount of information about food that is very limited. So I'm passionate about going and eating, kind of going to China, when I go to China or here in the US or in Europe or South America, trying every type of food that you can, local food, you learn about cultural aspects, you learn about why they eat that or why they eat like this. And I, I do respect all that and that helps you So to be creative. So when you think about how they live, how they move from A to B, how they kind of do all the normal things and co the cultural approach that you are kind of exposed to that changes your perception about cultures and about how you put a, a line in a piece of paper because you know, you know that you're kind of creating, you're communicating values and communicating ideals and form the kind of the form development that you choose is going to represent something. So if you understand the market, market that you're designing for or the brand that you are designing for, that's an essential characteristic. So the, the, the mindset of the lifestyle of being a designer, I assume, is about learning as much as you can and being curious. And so moving to kind of doing my master's or going into a further educational step, it's it's almost like a pleasure, right? It's kind of, I consider not, I consider it a life-changing opportunity. So it's it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. 
Sizzle, what can you talk about what you got out of that experience? In Italy, in, 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 uh, at Politecnico. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily, yeah, I mean, ab about going and doing this master's. I mean, what, what is it that you, that you learned in those two years? Or what skills did you acquire in those two years? Again, I think, as I mentioned, when, it, when, you, when you connect to people or when I have a student that kind of doesn't know anything about something and he comes humbly, comes to a classroom with the willing of learn and willing to learn and, and, and he absorbs and he's dedicated, it, it can transform his life, right? In a much better way. I think that what happened to me, I was there fully dedicated to kind of learn as much as I could. Amazing professors, amazing people, right? Um, Samuel Codegoni, Leonello himself, um, Mario Favilla, kind of, kind of that used to be director for Alpha Advanced Design years ago. All the kind of designers that I end up kind of meeting there and all the activities. I mean, I couldn't, I'm not going to try, I'm not trying to name everyone because I may miss, but all of them, they gave a little bit of themselves. I mean, they gave a lot of themselves and they keep giving to transform lives. And I, and I think that's what I got there. I, I end up transformed, probably smarter, I hope, <laughs> but knowing better the tools that would, got me in the position that I would like to. Again, I've been desi designing wheels and accessories for motorcycles or kind of cars and so on, working with aftermarket companies before, but I knew that to kind of, if I would like really to teach, to not to teach, to kind of to touch a full car one day, I had to, I had to go beyond. And, and this is the cool thing. And some people came to me and say, oh, but you worked, but let's say 15 years before doing that. And I said, well, 14 years before doing that. I don't remember. Probably I'd, I'm not good with numbers. That's why I'm, I'm a designer. So, <laughs> so many years before. And, uh, and, and, and some people come to me today and they say, well, when is the right age to become a designer? I said that the, the age that you feel like, right? It's up to you. It's not up to your age. It's up to what you are kind of, how do you feel somewhere there? What do you want to be, right? You need to pursue your dreams and you need to go towards that. Because when I started doing my master's, one of the things that I got, up, I remember meeting Flavio Manzoni in a situation and, 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 and he joked, he made a joke with me, sort of, you may be too old for this, right? Uh, it was a design competition. And I said, yeah, I've been working quite many years before. And, and, uh, but here I am. Why not? I'm doing a master's, right? That puts me in the situation that I'm a student again. Uh, different level, eventually. It is what it, it says is. What, what, I think what, I, what I'm really interested in is like, okay, your, 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 um, not only your track record, but I mean, anybody that's seen any of your work, I mean, it, it speaks for itself. It's, 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 it's up there, you know, and I, I wondered, uh, like, how much of that, um, did you have before you started that course for example i mean did you did did you did you did you see like a, an amazing uh progression in your in your um visual communication skills for example in those two years or was it more like a a personal development with with regards to your mindset um wh what did you did what sort of a, a transformation did you notice in that period that you were at uh um, SPD. Politecnico di Milano, not SPD. Oh, okay. Politecnico, okay, okay. <laughs> Another great university, by the oh, way. Okay. But, yeah. Um, I mean, we are what we experience, right? Again, as I mentioned, being curious, being... To answer your question, let, let's just start from a different perspective. Yes, I felt transformed. I learned a lot through that process. And it transformed the way that I used to see proportions, the classic Italian design, the Italian approach to forms and shapes, how to find, again, 
kind of if you're kind of doing a curve that you don't do like that, you accelerate that properly, you find the tension, you find what that represents and kind of how to communicate. I mean, every single, we get cold metal, basically, and we give forms to it that will bring emotions even when the car is standing still. So you look at that and you don't, most of the people don't know why, but they, holy shit, look at that. And you feel emotion. It's fucking cold metal, right? And it communicates all sorts of different things. Of course, it's related not only to forms and shapes, but the brand and what that represents culturally for people to people but but the forms they talk they do talk so cold metal can bring very hard uh uh hot and and and, and hearty emotions to say so the masters brought that to me but it added up to something that i considered that i never understood until a moment in my life when i started designing uh, bank agencies for Santander Bank and working as a CAD modeler. I used to sketch quite a lot, very loosely, right? When you start working in, in that field, I start putting straight lines all around because that's CAD, that's architecture, that's kind of electrical, electrical uh, plans and or kind of buildings. And again, banks, they're not that flamboyant. Right? And my mind went a little bit away from the flow the kind of the natural flow that you would have when doing a sketch and the kind of how to kind of get a beautiful line and so on and on. I mean, every single line must communicate something. And that I lost a little bit of that, I would say. Then when I started working again, slowly going back to graphic design, I didn't understand. I said, geez, I, I don't want to be a graphic. All due respect to graphic design, of course. Um, but I said, I, I don't know. I don't want to be a graphic designer. I want to be a car designer. And then I start slowly getting closer to that. But I knew that was something was missing it, right? And when I start doing my master, something very special triggered in my brain that all those 14 years before, they were essential. They were detrimental to what I was kind of achieving there. Because my knowledge of 3D, my knowledge of how to kind of think about space and forms and, and, and three-dimensionally, or how I used to work Photoshop in kind of graphic design and have completely control of that so it was easier for me to communicate my ideas. I mean, all of those experiences that in a moment for me was like, a, oh, why I'm doing this, they and they became essential. They became who I am today. And now I understand that. And I, I probably got that in the masters. One thing, one thing that I realized, and I, I, I consider that I invented this term because uh, I, I use it here, right? I think when as designers, we dream about stuff. We, we have that in our minds. We can see it, right? We have that bunch of forms and lines and shapes and, and colors that you want to communicate. But if you don't know how to do it, if you get a kid's drawing, they have the same dreams. Probably they're as creative or much more creative than us now because they are free, free of any constraints. But the ability to put that in a piece of paper is still crude, is still basic. So I consider that to become a designer, you need to have a specific kind of quantity of tools. And I don't like to call it tools. I like to think that about that in a different way. So I speak Italian. I speak Portuguese. Some, some people speak Spanish. Some people speak English. I like to think that to be a designer, you need to speak designish. Designish is the beautiful language that translates what only you can see. It's there somewhere, it's here, into a piece of paper, into a Photoshop render, into a 3D model, a low fidelity mockup, a kind of full functional prototype, and eventually the product itself. If you don't speak all those levels of designish, you don't get there. So, I mean, from drawing to form development to kind of 3D modeling, the handcraft, 
right? The craftsmanship that you need to have to kind of, you can sculpt a potato if you want to get, get a body side. Oh, how that works. Okay, let, let's see how it works. Let's get a knife and just scoop that and, and eventually you can get the reflections and understand how that looks like. But you need, or you can use foam or you can use hard foam, pink foam, whatever, 3D modeling, CNC, laser cut, whatever you want to, but you need to master those skills to be able to uh, eventually control and be creative, right? So speaking designish, it's essential. Let's let's say like that. I think that's a very um, interesting way of putting it because I I I've mentioned I've talked about craft to a couple of people before and the importance of craft. And when I mean craft, I mean like sh um, narrowing the gap between what's inside here and what you can put down on a piece of paper. The craft of learning to communicate mm -hmm. your idea and there's sometimes, um, maybe it's because I'm absolutely terrible in articulating myself, but this is sometimes mistaken for thinking like, you know, if you learn how to draw the perfect proportion car, whatever that means, that you are somehow limiting your um, creative thinking. And I, I, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying like you, you, in my, from what I've seen, it's absolutely imperative to learn how to communicate um, what your ideas are inside. And the way you do that is by learning the craft of design. You call it designish. And it's learning to yeah. sketch something properly. And it might be that you, you start off by doing, I don't know, the classic proportions. And then in the few, then you can evolve into doing some other wacky, new uh innovative stuff but i still think yeah. at some point like you it's absolutely imperative that you learn what has gone before you sure 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 again i uh, think about i i've been always fascinated about jagger dna and jagger history and heritage everyone knows that right uh and, and i'm still i have a bunch of books here only about a lot about car design, but I have a lot about Jags and I love it. I, I still love it. I, I, I don't need to hide that. I talk to Ian frequently and, and uh, he knows I'm passionate about that. And, but if you don't know what a brand represents, why and where those forms and shapes came from and why they kind of make it forms and kind of the real meaning of form, right? The kind of to, to be able to see the unseen, actually, uh, kind of every single theoretical line and why they've been done in that way, the radii and so on and on and on. Not that you need to be retro, don't get me wrong, but understand where they came from to be able to look towards the future, right? Uh, I think it's essential, right? I, I give you an example. A lot of students, and probably a lot of people mentioned this to you, they, they want to be designers and you ask them basic stuff, right? Kind of who was uh, Giugiaro, let's say like this. That's an easy question. Some of them said, who? <laughs> really? You don't know the kind of the, the basics of it, right? John May, kind of anyone that kind of would be part of that amazing history about automotive history. Just like anyone that was part of this amazing history, right? They create what we know as transportation and automotive design. And some of them, they have no clue. I mean, you must, you must know that you, you should be aware of all this and where those forms and shapes came from to be able that when you put again, a line and a piece of paper, your lines and your shapes and your forms, talk the right message because you see a lot of designs today they kind of oh let's do the, the designers and designs that come out kind of a lot of <laughs> it doesn't make any sense right a lot of things is like jesus how that happened and they forget that the purity and, and simplicity and respecting 
heritage and what that brand represents eventually is the most is the ultimate type of um, less mile that you can achieve, right? The perfection or the pure uh, interpretation that you can have about the brand. I think, like, um, I again, I you know, I speak from the point of view of of not. Uh, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination and uh and you know I'm uh just a passenger in this whole experience but I think with regard if you want to talk about craft specifically I think again you know if you want to if if you take those um the the masters like take Chijara for example you know or any or any um a uh, well-known designer from the past. I think there's a common misconception that by looking at something like that, you're limiting what you can come up with. You're limiting your ability to do something innovative. And I think it's absolutely horseshit. What, what I, what I think, like, if you want to talk about craft, craft goes beyond just sketching. Craft is also yeah. learning about, as you sa- talk about form purity, lead in as well. Uh, surface transitions and all of those things have been mastered by people like Jajaro. So, you know, you would be an idiot not to pay attention to those things to um, when, when starting out in order to sure. come up with something innovative. That's my perspective on it. And I'm sure some other people would uh, would would disagree with me, but I, I I wonder what what your stance on that is. I mean, it, it, that applies to every single type of field, right? If you think about Dieter Hems, what he did in the past, right? Kind of the, the, the products that he created. I mean, you know that they are basically the they are the base for all the work that Apple has done with their products, right? Yeah. You know that, that that's a kind of just a, a, a reinterpretation. Yeah. So again, a very well reinterpretation, by the way. But uh, the point is, as I as I said, my graphic design background, all the experiences that we kind of you assume you you have when you go to China or you go to Germany or you go to Italy, Brazil, Chile, or US. I mean, all that, it kind of directly putting a new input somewhere there, right? And let me get another coin or another page in that book inside there. And, and imagine not knowing the basics, as you call it, right? You must know. You must understand. You must be curious. You must be uh, absolutely. I'll go back to the beginning. You must have the lifestyle of being a designer. That is all this kind of the constant learner thinking, your behavior to create your database of knowledge, understanding that you can kind of, you must be all the time adding. You must be all the time being updated. You must, you, you need to look for design enabling technologies that you put two things together and you create something that no one has seen before. And I said, whoa. Actually, if I get that material with this PCB, with that kind of new sustainable material, and I put all them three together, I can create a completely new way to interact with your HMI. Something that people never thought about. But if you don't have all these different, this ability to join the dots, you're never going to be able to to see the unseen. Again, I'm repeating myself, but to see the unseen, to be able to, wow, the association, the power of the, to make this association, to see the problem, uh, framing framing the problem first, understanding how you can do those things. And there you are. You are kind of creating something completely new now. Says I, th- I think to be. I, I, th- I, like, I think what I'm also, uh, what I'm very interested to know is like, do you have any car sketches before you went and did your masters? I probably have. I, may have, I have boxes of. I usually throw away everything, uh, but I have probably boxes of very bad sketches as well. I need to. I mean, I've been moving quite a lot, 
and that doesn't help. No. I probably have a lot of stuff in Brazil from old time. And again, this is important. Actually, I love that you touched that, that, that thing because I see a lot of design students coming and saying, I want to be a product designer. I want to be a design medical devices or design cars or boats, a lot of boats. And people go, oh, I want to be a boat designer. Great. So let me see your sketches. And you get the sketches and they go, mm, okay. So and you ask, have you been kind of sketching, kind of doing what we said you need to do? And Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Have, have you been really trying hard? Ah, you know. So yes, but let, let's let's compare the design profession to an athlete to say. Imagine uh, Phelps, Michael Phelps, trying to win an Olympic medal. Waking up in the morning. Ah, beautiful morning. I'm not going to swim today. You know what? I'm going to swim just after lunch because I'm not feeling today. And then afternoon, he said, oh, I ate too much. I'm actually I'm not going to swim this afternoon as well. And he does the same tomorrow. Can you see him doing that? Of course not. He's dedicated. He's going to swim 10, 12 hours per day. He's going to kind of lose five kilos per day in the swimming pool in sweat or maybe more. Right, because he's there, kind of trying to achieve perfection in every single stroke. I don't swim. I kind of I swim like a bad swimmer, let's say like this. But if you want to be Usain Bolt or Phelps or any other Robert Scheid or any kind of multi medalist in your career in the kind of in, in the Olympics, you're going to there's no Christmas for you. You're going to swim every freaking day. Right, you're going to do all the time trying to achieve perfection, get that millisecond that when you turn is going to give you the advantage to touch the other side of the swimming pool first. And I think that this or a lot of generations, including mine, they kind of they get things for granted and they feel like, okay, I'm doing some, I'm doing that, I'm going to get the job. And then they get frustrated because we're getting used to this kind of on demand stuff. I want to watch a movie and I get it. I want to see something. I go to my phone or internet or my computer and I get it. We want to talk, I call you and I see you, right? So there is no, this kind of sense of a kind of, people achieve things very easily. They get it for granted and they don't realize how the kind of work that has been done in the background. So when they think some of the kind of guys think about their careers, they think, okay, now I'm going to get there. And then after they come to kind of reality, they face reality and say, actually, I'm not getting the job that I wanted. And then you talk to them. So have you been, let's say, sketching 10 hours per day, learning the history of your profession, trying to understand all, every single, not only alias, but Rhino, SolidWorks, Blender, V-Red, KeyShot, all the kind of possibilities that, have you tried at least? Have you been curious to open a file? Oh, no, I use just Keyshot and, and Rhino. Oh, mate, you're never going to get where you want if you don't know, have a general overview. Have you ever tried to make a Photoshop sketch? Yeah, I tried, but I use only Procreate and, and don't want to touch that. So why? So the, if there's no curiosity, right, if there's no paper sketch, your sketch in Photoshop or Procreate will suck. Right, because it doesn't matter. The the, 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 the the two is the same, right? You're touching the surface with a very thin point and there is a line. So it doesn't matter if you don't know how to handle the basics. Again, you're not able to do anything in any kind of uh, media. So you must be, we must have that mindset, I assume. So, so what sort of, what? Are there any um, sacrifices that you might have made um, around that time to raise your skill level to the level that you felt it needed to be in order to be successful? I think we all do sacrifices. I have two kids, actually three kids. One lives in Brazil uh, to live with, here with me. Uh, and I think 
I remember my wife, for example, was pregnant. Uh, we were reading our first daughter when um, I was doing my master. So actually, my daughter went to my graduation presentation, right? She was kind of two months old, something like that. And I remember that she used to complain about this. The noise. Right there. I don't know if you're going to get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And the smell. She said, we used to live in a very small uh, apartment in, in Milan. And she said, listen, can you stop making noise? I'm trying to, but every time that I open, it does make a noise. Kind of 3 a.m. in the morning, it's a lot of noise. And she said, I'm, I, I, can't, I can't cope with that anymore. Can you stop? I said, no, sorry, I can't. And I mean, you, you choose what you want to be and you're going to be, you must be dedicated. And how many times, for example, we try to have this meeting. Yeah. I failed you kind of 22 times already. Right, don't worry. Times, Dude, a little bit yeah, less, what, but yeah. that, that's what you get. I mean, you have, unfortunately, and I apologize for the two no, times. Okay. Dude, come on. And, uh, but it's, you're, you're kind of, you're doing the thing that you need to do. Sometimes, uh, you, you get, uh, not out of track, but you need to, to do a sacrifice. I think like the, 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 um, another way of asking a question is like, I, I, I know of quite a few kids that for example have gone like okay i have done my undergraduate and i still i i still haven't quite got a job yet and um i want to go and do a master's in italy for example the holy grail of car design and they go there and um you know some of the institutions are happy to take them in and take their money and whatever the case is and they think that by attending this course that miraculously at the end of that two-year period that they are just somehow going to wake up and they automatically going to be like you know exponentially better and i think like um a friend of mine it will get better but but not there's no miracle but right? <laughs> but but like i like uh, a, a guy that i had on the podcast who's become a friend of mine now is uh alan de rosier and he was saying yeah. that when he went when he went to italy he went with two of his friends and he said to them guys i'm here for three years i don't want to be rude i don't want to I, I i you guys are my really good friend and and uh and i value your friendship but i'm not fucking around I'm here to to work and I'm going to be working all day, every day sort of thing. And that was the sacrifice that he made and it worked, uh, it paid off, you know. Um, but I, I think like, um, you know, there's, there's two sides to that coin. You know, on the one hand, there's a thinking like, I need to go to a certain school in order to um, have this amazing portfolio. And then on the other hand, there's also the, the thinking of like, if I go to this fancy school, I'm automatically going to get be great. And there's both of those statements are incorrect at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, I do believe again, it's all up to you in the end, right? It's all up to again, think about I, I compare it to a kind of famous runner or F1 driver to say, right, there's a lot about the machine and it's about racing the cars racing then we have pilots but you see how much they train right the kind of the muscle of their neck right the reflexes and so on and on so they're all the time pushing the boundaries even if they're kind of top of the range pilots they're still daily pushing 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 there's no limit right you you, you have you need to have a high as a as a as an athlete needs to have a high performance muscle you need to have a high high performance brain right and a high performance muscle there that kind of it will be able to kind of design in context to be able to tell create a nice storytelling that will be able to be a visionary of the future that will think about human factors framing the future uh working with design and labeling technologies thinking about the psychological 
effect of a form, for example, I see a lot of kind of people designing and they can like, let's say, so let's give an example here. I'm designing a toy for a kid, kind of two years old range kid. And he comes with a kind of a Lamborghini surfacing, to say, full of edges and so on and so forth. Really? I mean, when you are handling a toy for a two years old or one year old, he's going to chew it, right? He's going to kind of beat him, unfortunately, by accident in the, in the face. If you come with these hard edges and this point points and kind of all these kind of live edges there, it's not going to work. Oh, I never thought about that. So, really? So you, you do understand the kind of how forms and shapes should communicate kind of or should perform or co accordingly to the function, right? The triple F forms follow functions, right? And, and then the kind of the practical applications of this and the materials that you're choosing. Uh, no, so okay, go back to the drawing board and start thinking about it, right? You don't do a, a seat, a car seat made of uh, nails, right? Again, kind of, there are some basics that we have this misconception, but you need to learn that. The university or the course that you're doing, it will give you only so much. It will give an amazing content, but it's up to you to be able to kind of digest whatever is necessary, go beyond to get even more information, join the dots, find the synergy, and then kind of be extremely good in something, right? So, in every career says i've got not only design i've got i've got an interesting question for you i know that at uh one stage um you were a, a manager slash owner in a in a pub in a restaurant i wonder what lessons you took out of hospitality that you brought into design that pleasure and work should be shouldn't be together you can never confuse, kind of get those things confused, kind of or mixed. One thing is work, the other one is having fun. I think that's pro <laughs> that's probably what I got from the pub, right? I like a pub. I like to go to pubs and bars and so on and on today. I don't know if I would own another one again. It was too crazy, too cuckoo bananas. <laughs> Dude, I, I spent 10 years in, in, in hospitality and I tell you what, I fucking, I was so happy when I left and I didn't, I was like, I'm done with this shit. I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. I have I'm the same done. feeling. <laughs> I have exactly the same feeling. <laughs> My God. I, Jesus, absolutely not. So, um, this a, there's again, I, as I said to you, this, this, one of the, one of the, there's so many things that you've done here and I, 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 you know, we've only got so much time. What, there's something that jumps out as well, apart from the hospitality, and that's the military vehicles in Hungary. Can you tell us, yeah. can you tell us a bit about that? Was there, was that as interesting as it sounds or? Yeah, it was, was a kind of a freelance work and we did a lot of, I did a lot of, ideation sketches and then so on and on and on again you use design enabling technologies try to understand the contest uh kind of do your research and try to kind of do the same it's just like designing anything else right the design process is pretty much the same but as you know when you when you and i haven't done that for a long time actually kind of i, I don't remember exactly but how long it took, but it was through a friend from Magnus Tire in Austria. Uh, and you know that, at least myself, and I assume that everyone that kind of is into this profession does the same, kind of when you, when you design, you're designing a product, you start dreaming about it. Right? You start dreaming about forms and about shapes and how do you see this and how do you see that. And I start kind of thinking about, oh, no, no, actually, I need to kind of get the guy more to shooting like that. And I start dreaming about those things. And I realize I'm, I, I don't know. That's not something that I'm kind of proud of, right? 
and kind of how those things look like. It's great, it's amazing, but I'm not sure about if I want to be responsible for this kind of product. I barely kind of designed something else, but it was a learning curve again, as everything is part of this library that is somewhere there, right? That that, that makes what I am today. If we if we go back to um, our time at Jaguar, I, as I remember it, you came in to, you joined in 2012 and you started yeah. out in the ETO team, which, um, no. Huh? no, is that incorrect? No, oh, no, 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 yeah, that's incorrect. Oh, okay, so where did you start? Basically, I did two interviews at the same week, right? I did one in Maranello and I did one kind of actually between kind of 15 days between both, one in Maranello and one at Jaguar. Again, I mentioned a few times, I, I love Jags and I love end up being there. But at my interview, if I remember correctly, we had Wayne and we had Alistair and we had Tad. And Tad Shout was out to Tad, Tad. Yellen. Oh, wow. I've, I do. Fantastic I've person. been fucking pushing that guy. You, know, I don't. So many Polish kids want to hear from Tad, and I just want to send out another invitation to Tad officially in front of fucking everybody that we want him to come on the show. He said. I could, he said twice he will do it, and he doesn't commit to it. So please, if you speak to him, we want him on. We exchanged a message today. We talk all the time. I talked to Nigel Fleet. And uh, I brought Tad here to the U.S. to make some workshops. And we had a very good time here, I must say. Kind of, I said, I need to bring this man here. And again, he was responsible and, and kind of all of them responsible. But Tad said, I, I need to get uh, Chess, as he, he calls me, kind of to the team. And I, I kind of... <laughs> felt absolutely overwhelmed by the opportunity. Of course, I joined uh, JAG and, and I started working at, at the 152 project, the F-Type. That's what how I started there and the production version and working, basically helping Tad. I joined as a contractor and that was a great time. That was probably one of the kind of happiest changes that I've done in my career. And I had a great time there. And then did you, but did you transition over to ETO or were you never part of ETO? I've, I've never been part of it. Why the no. fuck did I think that you were part of ETO? Because I remember seeing, I you, <laughs> no, but hold on a second, hold on a second. You did do, um, I remember specifically, you've definitely done a gear knob in your time over there. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Yes. I did. I did. But that, I did. okay, because I remember seeing sketches of Steering yours. Steering wheels, gear knobs, seats. Exactly, I, yes. Actually, the last seat, the slim seat that we use today, they use today kind of for, for SVO and, and Range Rovers, Land Rovers, Jags, the kind of the, the ultimate slim seat was a project that no one wanted to touch. And I ended up kind of working on that project and then and we got the seat of course the seat kind of got a lot of minimal changes after but the kind of the base sketches and the kind of all the development with uh, the supplier in that time uh i've done myself so again i've done i've done a little bit of everything there i would say but no i've never been svo or svr okay okay all the names that he got in the past. <laughs> Cesar, without um, giving away any confidential information or anything, because I we are working on uh, getting uh, getting Julian and the and the crew on, but we still are. Sure. Um, yeah, we've got to jump through some hoops. I wanted to know about a little bit more about Project Seven with regards to what you've just mentioned now. The fact that nobody wanted to, nobody wanted to do the seat project, for example. I, what I'm interested to know a bit more about how, um, how what opportunity you might have seen in that in that project, given that, you know, it, on paper it might not, it might not have sounded that interesting, but all of a sudden, 
at least from the outside looking in, that was the thing that kind of put you on the map in that company. Yeah, I would say, yeah. yeah. Did you see I mean, something that others might have, did you see an opportunity that others might not have seen or overlooked? I would say yes. I would say, and this is when, if you are just a designer, and don't get me wrong, if you're just kind of sketchy, sketch all the time, if you are a printer, and a lot of people, a lot of designers became printers, right? It's like, oh, you and this. And you don't pay attention on what's going around you. You eventually get lost in the system and you get lost in that thing. And, and, and you're going to make, you may have an amazing career. I'm not saying that everyone, there's a space for everyone. But I always love to think kind of, to observe and to think where the kind of, what is, where is this space here in multiple kind of, there's always, it's always there, right? If you do this, you're going to cover a lot of stuff, but there's always that space there that kind of will open, will be an eye opener for you. When I joined Jagger, I kind of, it was a kind of a dream for me for a long time. I, I had the choice to go to Maranello and Coventry. I ended up going to Coventry, right? That tells a lot about this and uh, in that time. and. Let's say I was working in an aerodynamic pack for the F type a, a four team of the year, I think. The differentiation between the R, the S, and how we could create a kind of revenue packages and so on and on. I always done kind of my artworks and kind of always been somehow connected to this. Use that to relax, to find my put my head again towards a direction and instead of being designing and kind of so kind of use big brushes, never go to details, just get whatever impression that was there. And at that time, going back to what I said, I've been always fascinated about Jagger heritage. I had a D type artwork that I've done on my desk. And I used to, one time I used to have a lot of models in my desk. People may have thought that I was crazy, right? I still have all of them and I have models hanging on my wall, as you can see, and I have a Ferrari there, I have a Jag F1, classic F1, and I have an Alpha, a Mercedes there, Alphas and so on. There's another one, there's an Aston what Martin. Is that, here what is that E-type bonnet on your, on your, that side, the blue one? Uh, that one? Yeah, I'll tell okay. about that later. Okay. And uh, so I had an artwork, right? And my, my dad kind of hanging. You remember how the desks at Jag used to, in the dance floor, how they used to look like. Dance after floor, being yeah. Furbish. Yeah. And uh, I was doing that aerodynamic package there. And I mentioned to my wife one day, I said, I love this place. I love what I'm doing here. I, I did the right choice instead of going to, to Ferrari. I, mean, you know, I, went to, I, I love this. I need to get something, right? I need to get something that will make the difference. And I think I was another day in my desk and something triggered in my brain. I mean, I'm doing the aerodynamic package kind of proposals for the F-Type, the most kind of high performance car that we have today. Uh, the D-Type has won Le Mans and has a huge story and kind of is famous for being aerodynamic, the thin behind the driver. Um, what about creating a bridge? Again, making a connection between those two glorious moments and creating something that celebrates that. And my wife mentioned to me, okay, keep drinking, have fun. <laughs> well, well, another one of my crazy uh, uh, whatever creation moments kind of going bonkers and seeing a lot of whatever and she said oh come on do whatever you want I don't mind and then I start sketching I start kind of trying to find what that could look like how I could translate that to the F type and eventually I got a sketch that I uh kind of few sketches, a kind of bunch of sketches. Now, it wasn't one, as everyone say. It was a bunch of ideation. Again, I'm kind of, I love doing as many kind of 
drawing as I drawings as I can. I keep doing them all the time. And one day I said, I need to present this. Right, right, kind of. I need to present the no one knows that. I'm going to tell that for the first time. <laughs> and uh one day I had to present the aerodynamic back, right? And and I said, if by accident that drawing ends up there as well, right? We need to it's kind not such of such a bad thing. Uh, kind of, we need to. I need to. Pres I, I'm not allowed to. I was supposed. I wasn't supposed to work on this. But since it's an aerodynamic pack, eventually, it could be part of the presentation. So then one day, kind of that happened, and I put a business plan and I kind of done some kind of further development one day one one day Ian came to me after seeing that and he sat beside me kind of my desk and said you won't believe we got the budget I said for what you know for the for for your project I said You're joking don't you no 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 and, and I said really yeah so we're doing it for go uh, for Goodwood and I said okay so you have almost a little bit more than a year. And he said, no, no, no. It's for the next good one. Have fun. And then we, we presented that. I think it was 2013. Right? And, and Or 14. Don't remember now. I mean, I'm horrible with numbers. And then Th it became 13, what it became. 13. So I'm extremely proud about that. I heard that um, it was the first time that I sketch like that became a project and became a successful project. Usually is the opposite, as you know, at Jack at least, kind of uh, everywhere, but the kind of the, how the sketch became project seven. Uh, usually you have a project and everyone starts sketching and so on and on and on. So I was extremely proud that an idea, again, joining the dots and trying to have this kind of vision of the future, how to kind of celebrate stuff and get a little bit of this, a little bit of that, uh, could create something that was unique. Uh, that worked perfectly, I would say. And we, and I think we, we generated just in kind of media over 10 million uh, pounds in the first weeks, kind of a spontaneous media. And, and kind of the thing went pretty well. I'm extremely proud, of course. That opened a lot of doors for me, closed a few others, let's say like this. Um, it worked well. So I think that's the job of a designer, right? This is sketching and designing is one thing. You need to chase opportunities. You need to kind of envision the future. You need to kind of not only, you need to design with purpose. It's not just putting a line in a piece of paper, but you need to understand trying to. It's not easy, right? How many? I, I failed kind of gloriously millions of times, kind of trying to do similar stuff at Jaguar, outside of Jaguar, and kind of in my life and my current job and the current private consultancy that I have. I mean, we achieve great results, but you need to be willing to do that. We need to find out, ah, I don't mind. I'm going. And Take initiative. Let's, let's see what happens. And that's probably, I'm not in a classic OEM or in a classic company today. I may go back one day. I don't know. I may stay where I am, but I'm enjoying as I never kind of enjoyed before the moment that I'm living because I've been doing a lot of stuff like this, like my artworks, like a lot of stuff. And, and, and sometimes that create me very extremely good results. Sometimes that created a lot of problems to me because being proactive and being this kind of pushing, pushing, pushing can be very good, but can be very bad as well. Depending. Yeah, some people don't like it. Some people really don't like some, it. Somehow, depending how it's perceived. I do the fuck way I want now. Yeah. I'm sorry about my English, but I do the way I would like to, right? And I push for the projects that I would like to. I don't want to, I'm not that guy, the type of guy that have a five posts per day and I look a lot of, looking for a lot of clicks. Right? Now I, now I learn how to 
I don't mind. I'm here. I don't need to be seen. I don't. I don't actually care about that. What I want is to design and have fun. I want to find projects that I will enjoy doing, like the boat that I'm doing. Great, amazing, a lot of fun for me. Like some of the consultancy work that I'm doing. Sometimes I have two designers. Sometimes I have. Six, eight designers, depending on the size of the project and the complexity. But one of the things, one of the things that I tell them is, listen, we are here to have fun, right? We are, of course, delivering something that is spot on. What the client wants, what the kind of the brief was, we're going to deliver that plus a lot of different things. But we must have fun. The design process should be fun. We must enjoy this. Then there is the rest. Not all, always going to be like that. It's a roller coaster, as you know. But again, I'm enjoying it. <laughs>